I was happily living on a 50-foot sailboat in uh, Rhode Island when uh, some, uh, some guy called me up, you know, from NBC, and uh, said that this Canadian um, uh, producer was doing a comedy variety show and that uh, he would like to see us and uh, if we were interested. And he was at the plaza and we were just supposed to call up and make an appointment. I think we almost didn't go, but then we said, why not? We had tickets to the Caribbean. And, but anyway, we went, knocked on the, came into New York, knocked on the door. Oh, he would never stay in such a hotel now. And um, is all this true? It's this true. is all kind of true. true. <laughs> I've heard uh, this story before. So yeah, it's I know. It's it's it's, it's, it's a saddle. So anyway, uh, you know, um, uh, we brought like designers brought some work for him to see, and, uh, uh, and he didn't look at it, and he uh, he he talked about the show a little bit, um, not much, and he. Uh, he said, and I, now, it seems like, I mean, it, it gets all convoluted that he, he couldn't find a, a designer in New York that he liked for some reason. And that's why, but I, uh, we had a play playing on Broadway, Candide, a Leonard Bernstein musical that, we, uh, that Harold Prince directed, and uh, who also here, is here in the plaza. It's nice to be able to go to his office underground. Um, anyway, uh, he, he had seen that, and, it, and, and uh, anyway, so we went and knocked on the door, nice young guy, very nice, and uh, told the thing, and then he said, I'm going out to a comedy club, why don't you guys come along? And we went to the comedy club, and uh, the only thing I remember about the comedy club, I can't tell you where it was anymore, it's too long ago, I can't remember, um, is that, uh, you know, <laughs> A big guy came up to the table and said, are they hired yet? And I didn't know who that was. It turned out that it was Dick Ebersole, but I didn't know that at the time, you know. And then that was that. Was that. And we were hired. And RCA owned the company. And, and, and it, New York was very different back then. The Radio City Music Hall was virtually empty, you know. Uh, uh, graffiti covered all the... the um, covered all the subway cars, you know. Uh, New York was not in good shape. Uh, um, 42nd Street, one of my favorite streets, was nothing but porn theaters. I must say I prefer it over the Disney stuff. Being in the theater, we, uh, we always are used to having some kind of assistance, and, and this was no, and so NBC said we, that we would, they would send some people around for us to look at. And they sent people around for us to look at. It was very bad, okay? I mean, and I was desperate. And I called Pete Fuller. Pete Fuller was, uh, had a legendary scene shop, had built all of Harold Prince's shows from the beginning. Uh, and so, um, <laughs> so, so, uh, so I called uh, uh, Pete, Pete up and said, I'm looking for a person, I need a person. Uh, do you know anyone? And he said, I have the perfect person for you. He's drafting for me now. I'll send him around. And, and, and this one came around. His hair was down to here. He had funny little glasses. Um, is that right? Yeah. You had a little red toolbox. Red that, toolbox. At the time, uh, this was a bad n news, that toolbox, because you know the, the security wasn't like it is now. GE did all that. The, the elevator, they, they would always stop him in the elevator, you know, carrying the toolbox because they thought he was taking things away. <laughs> so anyway, I don't know, so fine. So, and, and, uh, it, and they sent a few other people, but he was terrific, you know, he had a great attitude. He said, when do we start? I said, Monday morning, <laughs> and I think. Yes. And, and uh, I, it's hard to remember, and so, um, Anyway, so I, and, 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 and we went home to Rhode Island because I live in Rhode Island. I don't know why, I just like it there. Little corrupt city state. <laughs> you know, I went there to work for the regional theater there years ago. Anyway, so fine. So Monday, drove in, you know, went up to the 17th floor. Um, I must say, uh, just a side note, uh, it, you know, that very first day that we came down and looked and went down to NBC after, you know, after, after going to the comedy club, where we 
uh, Lloyd and, and Franny and I, we, we walked down 6th Avenue to NBC and walked into 8H, you know. They hadn't done a show in 16 years, live show, you know. And, and so I, I, you know, anyway, so I, co I come in, I go to the 17th, we picked, uh, it, it, there seems to be some controversy, but it, my, my story is exactly how it is. There's no, uh, you know, we went and looked at office space the very first day. And we even looked at radio, in Radio City Music Hall for office space, funnily enough. And, and we picked the space on 17. You know, the little corner, Lauren always had the little office on the corner. And, and one secretary, Kathy, is that her name? Kathy Minkowski. Kathy, yeah. Uh, cute, nice. Uh, and, and, you know, and um, I, I go up to 17 and, and they say, there's a huge meeting down uh, at the design department because they had one. And, I, I, and so I go down to that meeting, and it's all the suits. I can't remember. Head of Scenic Services, who was that? Uh, Dick Ebersole was there. I don't know. See, it's, but, well, Andy, I can't remember. It doesn't matter. Uh, and they were they, But they all had suits and ties, <laughs> okay? It didn't look good, you know? And I, what's, what's the problem, guys? And they go, Dick, my good friend, it's Leo. Okay, they go, what's the problem? I mean, he's hired. <laughs> and they go, look, I'll very, you know, the, basically what they were saying, the subtext of all of what they were saying is, you don't know nothing about television, and, and, and uh, we have to get you some help, you know? <laughs> and, and so that's that. And they said, our very best designer, Norman Davidson, award-winning oh award <laughs> designer, is a, it has suddenly become mysteriously available. And I'm like, uh, well, what about Leo? And they go, <laughs> they, 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 it's a little like Trump, I told you. It's like, uh, they said, uh, well, you, you know, uh, Dick said, well, I'll, I'll, I'll deal with that. The, the subtext of that was, I'll fire him right away. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and, and I just went crazy. See, I don't get crazy anymore, but at that time, I, I, I just went crazy. I can't say it'll, you know, what, every, what I said, but, I, and they all just went like, oh, don't, and, and they were like, don't get mad, please don't get mad, don't get mad at us. You can have Leo, you can have Norman too. And so we started off with Norman <laughs> and Leo, and, uh, which was great, you know? And uh, RCA owned the company. Uh, you, you, you may remember it all better than me, but you know, it's like, it was kind of great because there was like people in all the offices wait. It was like a, it was like an opera company. Special effects sitting waiting for the phone to ring, hoping someone would call them, you know, something like. And you, we could call engineering, and say we don't. I don't know. We didn't know anything back then. How how high well, the does whole it, point how of high you, does the camera go? The how whole, low does it the go? The whole point of you guys doing the show was that you didn't know anything about television, right. and I think that's exactly what Lorne wanted. 